Hello and welcome to another Bookish Avec Moi. And this week I finished two books. So uh, let's talk about the books that I finished first. The first one is uh, Elena Ferrante's The Story of the Lost Child. This book was originally in uh, Italian and it was uh, translated into English by Anne Goldstein. I read this together with Kirsten of Kirsten0929 as a buddy read and uh, safe to say that I like this book and uh, I really like this whole story. So this book is part of the Neapolitan novels. It's a series of four novels uh, about these two characters, Elena and Lila who starts out as little girls in a poor and violent neighborhood in the 1960s in Naples, Italy. And so this entire series of, uh, you know, consisting of four books, talks about how these girls, they just kind of have to navigate life, being really smart and intelligent uh, girls and later women, and uh, the kinds of challenges that they have to face um, in their attempts to kind of find their own, you know, success and place in their life. Now, um, this this series it also talks about the friendship between these two girls, but the friendship is not, you know, the kind of uh, really traditional nice and sweet friendship. It is also filled with so much toxicity, um, also some. Uh, spite and jealousy and envy uh, you know these two girls they have done things to each other out of spite so it is a rather complicated relationship but somehow somehow they always find themselves drawn to one another which makes this story really really interesting now this is the last book which means that I finished like this entire series and I just really like the way how this whole story ends. It's a, overall it's a really complicated story, but um, it is also a simple one because it's, I am convinced that this entire story of four books, it's pretty much a coming of age story of Elena and how Lila, who is her friend, and how Lila's presence just pretty much affects Elena's perception of the world and how she develops into a, uh, into a person, how she matures. And I find that really, really interesting because it is really complex. There's tons of, there are tons of character development happening in this book. And I really like the way that this book ends. Um, basically, an element that was mentioned in the first um, in the in the first book, in the early in the first book, it popped up again at the ending, and it kind of gives this sense of uh, this whole narrative returning like full circle. And if you're the kind of person who likes that kind of story, then you should totally try the Neapolitan novels. Um, yeah, I think that Elena Ferrante writes uh, these female characters really well, and. Uh, it's really nice to see not only these two girls, but also other female characters were being added into this as well. Um, they all have like really different and, you know, kind of vibrant personalities. Um, really different characteristics. And uh, many of them do not stay flat. But in general, many of the characters, not just the female characters in, in this entire series, do not stay flat. Um, which is, you know, great. You see so many changes in here. Um, the books, they kind of connect to one another uh, with, you know, with, with cliffhangers. So that's awesome. They, they, are, they are really cohesive that way. So yeah, this entire series, really nice, really awesome. Another book that I finished is also part of a series, and this one is Alice Smith's Spring. So this book is the third book in a seasonal quartet, and uh, I'm reading this as a part of a group read hosted by Sarah from Hot Cup Hearts. And so next month we'll be reading the final book, and that is Summer. And just like autumn and winter, spring 
it deals a lot about the basic theme of uh, human connection, I would say. You know, the connection between different people and uh, the kinds of se things that separate people uh, and how there are efforts to kind of bridge that gap and at the same time there are also efforts to kind of even widen that gap. And within that discussion there are also things like art and how art really influences that and also how technology comes into play like what is the role of technology um, in terms of human connection so I think with spring the idea of human connection especially um, with with focus on the refugee crisis and immigration issues this book feels even more on the nose I think uh, because this is where you see even, I would say, starker depiction of uh, uh, issues surrounding immigration. So basically these, this book has uh, two plot lines. The first one concerns uh, a character named Richard and he's kind of in the progress of uh, making a TV adaptation with his colleague about uh, from this novel about these two real life uh, authors Catherine Mains Mansfield and also Rainer Maria Rilke and um, basically these two characters they in in real life they kind of they were in Switzerland at some point and uh, staying at the same place but I think in real life they didn't really see each other but uh, what uh, what was intended to be done in this TV adaptation is that uh, the colleague especially really wanted to write such that these two authors meet with one another and they have an affair and you know to include sex scenes in that adaptation and so Richard is kind of uncomfortable with that idea because it doesn't really it doesn't really make sense and it doesn't really like give like the, 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 the right truth on uh, who these people are, who these authors are, what really happened in actual history and um, yeah he was kind of conflicted in this in this whole thing and so he didn't really want to go with that sex scenes risky adaptation route and uh, he just kind of goes to, I guess, to uh, Scotland to kind of reflect, I guess. And uh, the other plot line concerns this woman named Britt, who is a uh, detainee custody officer who works at a immigrant removal center, where basically she kind of has to fa uh, face uh, the, I would say, the terrible condition that uh, immigrants have to have to deal with, you know, the detained immigrants have to deal with in their cell um, in that center. And being the, the guard at that center, she's, she kind of has to face this on a daily basis. And uh, one day she meets this uh, young girl named Florence, and Florence wants to be reunited with, his, with, with her mom. And so she travels uh, with Brit, who somehow got I don't know, enthralled by, by Florence. And, you know, Florence seems to have this enthralling capability and she does that to other, other people, other characters in this novel as well. It kind of makes it a little bit more magical. But in any case, Britt was enthralled to follow her and she just kind of um, travels together with her to a place in Scotland. And it is there that these two characters kind of uh, meets with Richard and the story kind of also proceeds from there. So I think that like the first two books, this one is also, I would say, a collection of different things jumbled together, like mixed in together, which I, which I think is just fine. You know, I kind of like that. I, I, in fact, expect that from Alice Smith's writing. And her style is also consistent, but also inconsistent in... It's inconsistent in 
in a very consistent way that makes sense. Consistently inconsistent. So I enjoy that. And uh, as usual, I don't get every single reference in this book, but I still am able to kind of manage, you know, I, I'm still able to uh, enjoy this story, which, which is, you know, it's, it's great. Like, how many authors can do that? <laughs> so next month, I am going to proceed and read Summer. And I got this book, just got this book, I think, yesterday. This is a very big, uh, big trade paperback edition that I have. Um, but yeah, it kind of makes my entire collection like really inconsistent. <laughs> oh, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those are the two books that I finished this, uh, this week. Now moving on to the book that I am currently reading, aside from these two books, I'm also in the middle of reading this one by Miriam Tives. Yeah, so Miriam, Miriam Taves. <laughs> this is All My Puny Sorrows. Um, this book is, uh, it's, it's, it is delightful, but at the same time, it is sad. Like, it is, uh, it makes you giggle sometimes, but you know, while you're reading, there is this undertone that is just really heartbreaking. And you seem to know that it is going to lead you somewhere heartbreaking. Yeah. So it's a happy, sad book. Basically what this book is about is uh, it's about these two sisters. One sister is kind of really trying to, you know, end her life. She is really depressive and she has uh, suicidal tendencies and she has kind of attempted that a few times. And the other sister is just trying super hard to support this, uh, this, this troubled sister. And uh, she is just really trying to be there for her. But at the same time, she knows that the things that she, she is doing, she, she's, she's really helpless. She does not know what to do exactly in order to solve her sister's problem. So all that she can do is just stay with her. And it really highlights this, uh, this helplessness that uh, this, this sister is feeling. And uh, the things that she wish she can do, but she knows that it's not going to help. And uh, throughout this book, until the point I've, uh, I've been you know, reading so far, um, it really also highlights on the very mundane and typical things that people just kind of have to deal with uh, not only the depressed person but also people who are you know caregivers of the uh, of the person you know these two parties they also have to deal with real life so the things that happen in day-to-day -day life really basic mundane stuff and at the same time they also have to deal with the fact that there is someone with depression going on and it really affects their lives in ways that it's not exactly um i wouldn't say it's 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 not romanticized like depression in this book is not romanticized but rather it is portrayed as something that is just in the way that is that is like an actual illness which i think it's it's really good. I think it's really well done in this one. I'm really enjoying the writing so far. And um, yeah, I, I definitely am going to continue with this one. i um, going to read this one after this. So I guess those are the things that I have uh, this week. Uh, what do I plan to read next? Um, definitely, I'm going to read All My Puny Sorrows. Um, let's see. I've been planning to read these books by John Fowles as part of my double shot. The first double shot that I did was uh, with Barbara Kingstolfers. Um, and uh, this is pr pretty much where I'll be reading books uh, of an author that I've not read before. And I'm going to read two books at the same time. And so 
Um, I have here the French Lieutenant's Woman, which I actually started with the first chapter a while ago, but then I kind of forgot what happened, so I think I just kind of have to begin again. And, uh, and also this one, The Collector, which I have not started. So maybe, maybe I will uh, try and uh, read at least one of these, uh, one of these books uh, next week. And I'm also planning to just kind of join the uh, March of the Mammoths, where you need to read, like, uh, not that you need to read, <laughs> where you can read um, a book that is uh, 800 pages and more. And uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish it. Maybe I could, maybe I could not, but who cares? Um, <laughs> But I really want to try reading this book. This is I Know This Much Is True by Wally Lamb. Um, I got this one from a used bookstore. Really beautiful cover. It's a, it's a mass market paperback. And with mass market paperback, it always brings memories of, you know, libraries uh, of my childhood. And... Uh, w when I was younger, when I went to the went to the library, there would be plenty of um, mass market paperbacks, and most of the books there would be romance books, which I did not actually pick up. But um, they have, you know, they all have this really consistent smell on them, and I think this one has that smell, musky smell too. So I think it's really nice, uh, although uh, a, a thick mass market paperback does feel kind of scary, you know. It, it might feel less scary if this one is a trade paperback, larger dimension, maybe, who knows. But um, I was actually kind of considering to read uh, Gravity's Rainbow by Pynchon for much of the mammoths, but then I thought that that book is probably a little bit too eclectic. I don't know, and I think that I have too much going on right now, so I don't really want to deal with so much right now and end up not enjoying it when I could probably enjoy something at a different time. So I think I would probably want to try something a little bit, um, a bit more, you know, hopefully, hopefully a bit more subdued, like a family fiction. So yeah, I, I, I'm going to try this one. So. Wish me luck! <laughs> and um, yeah, I guess those are my plans, rough plans so far. And uh, probably I'll pick some random books also. But uh, in any case, um, I guess I'll see you again in a different video. So until then, take care. Yes. Thanks for watching. And what else? Oh, bye! <laughs>